How y'all doing? Yep, we're messing with the 400. I said in a video that I didn't use. I shined up. That cleaned up pretty good. So, what looks like really crappy rods actually don't look that bad. They just need a good cleaning. So, anyway. Uh, I, had, I had some of this on video yesterday and I didn't end up using it. Actually, I don't think I got this videoed. I don't know. Anyway, in order to put a 350 crank in, you need, these are 10 under 400 bearings. Then you can put whatever bearing you need. And your rear bearing, that's what they do to them. They take the thrust off them. So when you put your bearing on, it fits over it. So, in this set of spacer bearings, is missing two of the upper bearings. We got all the bottoms, but two of the uppers are gone, which I'm just going to use these for mock up anyway. So, <sighs> yeah, I'm a dragon butt today, guys and gals. I'm not really sure why, but anyway, um, I got the, I cleaned up the crank yesterday. <laughs> I'm just going to use the three bearings to support the crank. So I'm going to drop this in with a bearing and see if it sticks out of the hole or down in the hole. Um, like I said, I don't... I don't know. They're supposed to be 5.7 rods, but they don't... Eh. I don't know. So we're going to check that out here. So... I guess with that, it's time to set this crank ship in there. Now, put oil on the bearings already. I know that one's not going to be right, but this, this is what we're going to do right now. And i got to get these closer. Oh, man. Okay. Here's the rear. So I need number one. Number three, main cap. Show that there. Excuse me, sorry. Even though it's just mock up, and what I do is I use a Scotch Bright pad. Just to clean it because it's been sitting for a while. And this is just for mock up, this is not assembly. So. Okay, and this, I've cleaned up the space, what they call the space bearings, and this one, this fits a little loose, so that's why I'm not sure I'm going to, I would ever use those, but. and then you just simply put, uh, the guy had a, Way of doing it, you probably could make your own. I 
I'm not sure what's going on. Brand new bearings and they got a white cloud on part of the edge. So I don't Like I said, this is just mock-up. Really? Grandkids were here the other day and they stuffed my rage down in the box. I'm going to be spinning this anyway, but protect the bearing. Oops. Socket, did I? Yeah, I've been listening to music trying to get the energy to do something today. Okay, that's a first. You never had to have them before. All right, I gotta check to see what's going on. Make what, sure when you read the size on your brains, you look at them right. The rods are 20, the mains are 10. I put 20 under mains. And whoops, Tom Buck. Da 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 da. No wonder. <laughs> God. I should have. <laughs> oh, I felt like a newbie. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, I can anyway. Alright, I'll get this dug apart and start over. Okay, that looks better. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. That fits a lot better. It moves this time. 
See? <laughs> like I said, this is just mock up. And I'm just trying to see what I got for sure. Or what I can make work here, anyway. Now, I started working on this yesterday, but my oldest called and created a bunch of grief. I'm going to be glad when that new, new baby's here. I just... Uh, stay there. So, wipe that down again. Here is number three. <laughs> sitting around here it's gotten dirty like I said this works out to be used I'm gonna to have to balance this motor anyway so okay spacer bearing So this is not anywhere near assembly like this is just to see if there's anything to work with or if I'm thinking I got the wrong parts or what and you put no oil behind between the spacer bearings and your working bearings here Good sign, the oil squeezed out, so. You wanna make sure you got a very good radius crank. Oh yeah, that's been a nice, real nice. <coughs> and we'll clean this one quick. You're probably wondering why I'm messing with this. Well, I'm kind of stuck. I've got an idea. I need to actually figure out what I got here so I can tell the machine shop what to do next. Because we're trying to get some things going. really 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 close to find out now you guys can make your own probably spacer bearings but I notice it'd be cutting the notch area for the bearing tang be the problem I think so get that on the right way oh, it did it again I just want a little on there down quick and then we can oh 
Oh, that spins. Very, very nice. Wow. Okay. Here's a red burn we need. Put that in the pocket. And I'm gonna do number one here. Oh, so I got to uh Set it up top. Is that with no worries? And uh, we'll just put a actually one half the bearing. Oh, you guys can't see. Take your bets. Place your bets now. This is going to fall in the hole or stick out of the hole with the bearing. Bearing thing out, so that means it's like this. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and drop that down so I can control it. All right, what's it going to do? Is it going to pop out? You guys got your bets in? Place your bets, everybody. Does it stay or does it pop out? And the verdict is... It falls short. It's The dome is level with the top of the... Pit, the deck. We are an eighth inch down, so those are set up. They are. I got to do some double checking, but uh, evidently, the 400 is what three and three quarter inch stroke, three and a half. So. Well, that wasn't what I was hoping for. Yeah, domes. Domes flush. Darn it. Yep, and it fall. Yep. Well, I guess I'll have to dig out the... i got to see if i got any standard 400 cranks. Because I, I've got a standard 400 crank. Now i got to see if i got standard 400 bearings. And we'll drop that in and see what we get. Is, yeah, that's that's a 350 rod, so somebody must have been doing a long what this was a poor man's long rod 406 is what it was. Well shucks. Alright, well. I'll see if I got any standard 400 bearings. If I don't, then I'm just going to leave this crank in here because it's easier to store here. And uh, yeah, that's one less thing on the floor to kick around. But yeah, it's going to have to go be polished. Polished or turnt? I don't know. So darn it. I was hoping this was a 377 setup. Hey, I can't win them all. I can't win them. Well. If I had a set of six inch rods, that uh, probably would work with these pistons. Let's 
So yeah, we're about. You know what? We're going to measure to see how far down the hole we are. I'll do that here. I can. I have the not technology to do that. Because if we're five seven. I bet you we're three hundred thousandths down in the hole, so I could almost put six inch rods on this. I want to measure that. If that's three hundred thousand shorter, I I got luck. I can't remember if we got any more six inch rods around here or not. That were floaters that we could uh, mock up. Hmm. All right, let me do a little digging. I'll be back. All right. Do a little digging around here. Figures that I'm going to make some noise. We're going to do a little. Another mock-up. I found... Another rod. So, is there a notch on this? Usually that's forward, so I got a pre uh, floating pin rod. Just trying to figure out, and these are marked for a 377 setup, so which is a 377 setup uses as backwards. It's just we're just checking anyway, so. Well, that's better. That one. So. Hmm. What is the difference here? All right. Okay, since uh, I've had the camera on, I had the guy here with the Toyota that we had to fix his windows on. He tried a new window switch and everything, and it didn't work. And uh, Come to find out, it was a bad fuse. So, we had a nice little talk, and I tell you this, uh, we've had some more surprises here. Things are starting to look better. And you know who, and the person watching, you know who I so, thank you very much. Big time. Very big time. Anyway, I've already changed out the crank. I put the 400 crank in. This is a standard 400 crank. It does look pretty good. I like to dip it in the vapor rust if this ends up working, but it's a standard crank. So, we got this one, and we're going to see if what I'm thinking is correct. I'm really thinking this standard, these piston set here is for what I would have called a long rod 406 back in the day so here we go we'll drop her in the hole and see what happens since there's no rings on it I don't want it to drop and hit the crank okay we're bottomed up alright place your bets people is it going to come out of the hole 
stay in the hole. What are we going to do this time? Because I talked to somebody and they said, sounds like they put the wrong rods on the wrong piston. So, got your bets made. You ready? Let's try this again. On your marks, get set. You got it. What's it going to do? What's it going to do? What is it going to do? Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. And there we go. Yep, this is, that's why they have beveled edge. So, we got a 406 on our hands. Okay. Uh, where did I put that? Oh, it's right here. Let's see what we're down in the hole. Now I got this thing adjusted. Now we got this adjusted. Let's see. Okay. Make sure it's still zeroed. Yep, it's zeroed. So. We went all the way around 25, 25, 31, 2, 3, 4 there. Let's see what we got over here. Okay. 25, 30, 3. But I don't know if that's at a true dot. Top center yet. So knowing that if that's 20, if I really wanted to get technical, okay. So zero. Yep, zeroed. I can't go right there because there's a hump. Oh, I can get over there. Okay. 25, 31 thousandths, so 31 thousandths in the hole, and this is where it comes into play if you wanted to, knowing that that's 31 thousandths down in the hole, and if you want to bring the compression up a little bit more, you could take 20 thousandths off the block, and that'd be 11 thousandths below deck, because then that moves your gasket down. Then you got to figure your gasket and that. So, this block in theory could be decked 15 thousandths. It ain't going to hurt anything. But then you got to do your heads and intake to match. So, but yeah. So, that's what we got. I thought it was going to be a 377, but it can be a 11 to 1 or so, uh, 406. I better see who's been messaging me. So yeah, that's what those are set up for. They're set up for uh, what I used to call a long rod, but it's not really a long rod, but. I'll have to check the clearances on this crank. That could be, I mean, this would be a good, cheap little 406. So, anyway. Hmm. Alrighty. Started out thinking I was going to build something else, and uh, I guess not. Tools. Uh, Tools, tools, tools. So, that means that steel crank can still stay around for my 377. I don't know. But anyway. Alright, well, that, I got to do a little thinking and juggling and figure out what we're going to do.
It's good stuff. That's good stuff. So. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, it's going to be that time of night. That spins really nice. And looking at the crank, like I said, I dipped this in a evapor rust, and it will take all the surface rust. There's not surface rust on the machine areas, but it's that surface rust out here that it should be dipped. That's taking a hit. Hmm. Didn't know that. Evidently, the crank's falling over somewhere along the line before I got it, or something fell into it. There's a sharp spot. Knock it down so I don't lace my finger open on it right now. But, uh, yep. And I think the guy that checked this block before, and I'm going to check it again, I think it is finished home. I just got to get it washed up. Or see what the clearance is on these. It's that time of night. Oh, uh, Alright, give me a couple minutes here. I don't remember where I was talking. I hate that when I do that. Anyway, uh, but we'll go into the things on this. Now, this uh, this set of rods have been set up to where you could put a normal base circle cam in it. One way of doing it with the rods that this has got is going to a small base circle because you got a longer stroke, a bigger rod and they would hit the camshafts. Well, the, and it was only a couple of rods that would hit the actually hit the lobes. Uh, there's a, in one of my books it tells you which one, so you actually didn't need to bevel them all, but most people did anyway. Um, so we'll go. We'll get into more detail on that as we go. And I'm thinking about building this with a set of 882 heads. And. Uh, I got a cam from that old uh, 327. I'd have to look that up. I think that was like 534 lift. So that'd be a good little spunky motor. But yeah, we'll get into it. I had to figure out which setup it was. Um, the box was marked. It was supposed to work with the 350 crank and the 350 rods. So it should have been. And then we'll discuss the difference between the 377 wrist pin heights and the. There's a whole bunch of stuff to go into this. But now that I know that I've got like three or four or four hundred cranks. I even got the turn one that goes to this block up there. Uh, and it looks like I've got 1010 10 bearings for it. So I don't know. I might save that crank for another build and I don't know. There's a lot of choices that could happen yet. Um, evidently I'm popular today on the texting. So now we kind of got a way to an idea which way we can go. <laughs> I mean, I think it turns easy. I know there's no rings or nothing in there, but uh, making sure it's set down. So yeah, I mean, if we really wanted to get technical and keep the compression up, we could deck the block x amount. So. What they, what you could do what they call a zero deck so where this area of the piston and the deck there's no clearance on zero deck because then your gaskets there would give you the space but if you get rod stretch in here or anything you, you that's when when you start going zero deck you really got to control your rods you got to control the piston yeah there's so you start tightening things up that tight, it's getting pretty serious. So, anyway, and then I know of a local guy that's got an engine dyno, and I'd almost like to get this done and get. I'll break it in here and get the runtime on it here, then take it over to him, and then let him tune it and dyno it, and maybe see what we can get for numbers. So, if things keep going. We'll be uh, getting into doing motors, and we'll have dyno sheets with these things. And uh, if everything goes right, and I can get the other motors home, and uh, we'll get those dynoed, show what they're making, and 
have all sorts of fun. But, uh, yeah. So, I guess, that's that. Uh, there's a lot more to explain and show and do as we go, but uh, I now know these were for a 400 crank, 400 block. So, and, uh, I can't believe there's only 135 thousandths difference between the, with the 5.7 rod, so. I don't think there's any rod links under six inch between five seven and six inch that would have worked with this. But anyway, we got it figured out now. It clears, it goes, and we might see what we can do. See y'all later. I'm starting to babble.